Hello everyone, welcome to Training Unit 7. My name is Dr. Liam Moore from the Munster Technological University in Cork, Ireland, and we're going to look at focusing on MQTT and that interfacing with the real world, and by real world I mean real-time data collection from the factory and how you might do that uh, with MQTT with some real demos to highlight the points we've been making. What we'll look at here is bridging brokers. So we've talked and mentioned about uh, mentioned this in previous training units and we'll go into this in a bit more detail so you'll understand what it means. We'll look at how it might interface into an MQTT network from a PLC's perspective and we'll look at some demos from an end-to-end -end perspective on getting data from a test rig all the way to a PC which will act as our endpoint in this case. So starting with broker bridging. We want to develop an understanding of the concept of broker bridging and how to configure Mosquito to bridge brokers. So an MQTT bridge allows you to connect two brokers together. So you are familiar with the concept of connecting clients to brokers. Um, it might be a scenario from a scalability point of view where you have you know, 60, 70, 80,000 clients and you might want to segregate, segregate that data and you can do that at the broker level by connecting them to different brokers and only passing relevant data true to the cloud or to other brokers where it might be um, necessary. And the broker bridging allows us by making one broker a client of the other broker. Um, you set up rules within the broker that's the client to determine which data you're going to pass and that data passes from the actual clients of the client broker true to the other broker. It's a commonly done on industrial applications to connect production manufacturing brokers to a central broker and this allows you to bastion your network so you have various brokers in charge of various parts of the network and this could be related to actual production lines or production assets and then only real information of absolute uh, note is passed um, from the subsection brokers up into the central areas um, and that way you're, low, you're partitioning your data, it adds extra layers of security because you have many brokers with different security rules in place. And if you want to scale or add an extra section on, you can do it by adding another broker and having clients report into that. So you can typically only configure one broker as a bridge. So here's a diagram um, showing that. You have your edge devices um, sending MQTT messages to a gateway. There's a broker on that gateway configured to uh, act as a bridge. It sends data through to the network, um, kind of I suppose to the central broker, only passing data that you've uh, set up or you've greenlighted to be passed into the central network um, and at central location that's just getting data as usual. So why would you configure brokers as bridges and not just connect everything to one broker as clients? So first reason here is cloud integration. If you have devices publishing data to a local MQTT broker and you want to integrate that data with cloud-based services or applications, a bridge can relay data from the local broker, broker to a cloud-based MQTT, MQTT broker, making it accessible to cloud applications. So that's instead of having your, I suppose, local broker getting a direct connection to the cloud, you may not want that. You might have that in a sensitive part of the network or sensitive equipment. You can connect that instead to a cloud-based MQTT broker, which has its own different set of rules and security, um, essentially creating a sort of firewall between your local broker and the cloud. Second reason is aggregation and consolidation. MQTT bridges can be used to aggregate data from multiple MQTT topics to brokers into a single stream, allowing you to consolidate data for analysis, monitor or reporting purposes. So you don't get vast avalanches of data, you can start consolidating at the broker level. It allows some filtering and transformation. A bridge can filter or transform MQTT messages before they are forwarded to the destination broker or network. This can be used for pre-processing data or applying business logic before it reaches its final destination. So you can have certain rules in place to transform data, transform it from one topic to another topic, um, and so on. Uh, so think about if you have 10 local clean lines on one um, plant feeding into the broker on that plant and you have 10 other clean lines on another plant feeding into the broker there you can pass the data only of interest to the central area or you can retag it to be plant one clean line one and so on 
Bridges can enforce security policies and authentication mechanisms between MQTT networks. This ensures that only authorized clients and messages are allowed to pass through the bridge. So as mentioned, each bridge and each broker can have its own security policy. Um, it gives you extra layers of protection and less extra layers of authentication. Bridges uh, are used for scalability uh, to scale MQTT broker clusters. You can add new brokers and bridge them together to handle increased client loads while maintaining that cohesive MQTT network. So each broker you bridge could have you know, 100,000 clients, but you only need to bridge at the broker level, rather connecting 100,000 clients directly to a central location. So you can have cross-network communication. MQTT bridges enable communication between MQTT networks that might be physically or logically separated. And this can be useful in scenarios where you have MQTT brokers in different locations and you want to create a unified network or relay messages between them. Legacy systems or devices that don't natively support MQTT, a bridge can act as an intermediary to convert data between the legacy protocol and MQTT, allowing you to modernize your infrastructure without replacing existing components. Firewall traversal, in case there were no network security as a concern, you can use MQTT bridges to bridge MQTT communication through firewalls and network boundaries. And I'll show you a diagram uh, of that uh, shortly. It can also be used for load balancing and redundancy. So MQTT bridges can be used to implement load balancing and redundancy strategies. Multiple brokers can be bridged together to distribute client connections evenly or provide failover capabilities in a production environment, ensuring high availability and reliability is essential. And this uh, for, um, feature of MQTT and brokers uh, is a good use of that. So take a typical production environment and we've gone back to our level ones and a level twos and a level threes. So here in our production environment, we have PLCs, maintenance PCs, all that sort of stuff, publishing and subscribing in an unencrypted format to a IoT gateway running a broker here that's set up to bridge. And this bridge is going to connect the production environment with the level three environment through a router. So the router can be configured for various rules, only allowing the IP address, for example, of um, the gateway broker uh, true. And this broker can be configured to only leave certain messages of interest true um, from its clients here. And this, the router acts as a layer of security. The broker here, you have an unencrypted network, um, but the broker now is going to encrypt that data that it gets through, convert it into encrypted data, and pass that out an external connection up to an MQTT broker up here. So this is the client broker down here. Um, and that's got the bridging rules set up. The MQTT broker here only sees this as another client. Um, and it's an encrypted channel from here to here, adding an extra layer of security. So you can have your unencrypted network down here where you may not be too concerned about security. But as soon as you go external from the production environment, you need to tighten things up. You can do that using the broker here rather than having every single client down here having to operate a full security suite. So generally only the broker who's sending data needs to be configured to act as a bridge. And that bridge configuration is done in the configuration files similar to all the other settings that you set up. If that file is managed properly, you should have a section for bridge options commented out here as shown below and anything to do with bridging would be added under there. For configuration, you need the address and port of the broker that you're going to try and connect to. So it's IP address and port number, a client name for the broker doing the bridge. So the, uh, the client that the broker that's establishing its bridge and the topics you want to subscribe to and publish. So, so topics you want to subscribe to from the broker you're connecting to and publish to. And you can remap topics if required. So if a topic comes in from a client and you want to remap it into a more globally accepted name, uh, you can do that within the bridge itself. And you see the options here, your connection name, your address and port, uh, and your topic um, configurations. And I would suggest if you're doing this sort of work, make sure that you work with the uh, guidelines and pages for the brokers you're working with and how this topic mapping uh, happens. But you can have the topic that's coming in, the topic that's going out, um, the QoS level you want it to have at, uh, and so on. Topics in a bridge have the format as topic pattern, 
uh, topic, topic pattern, direction, QoS, local prefix, remote prefix. Topic prefixes are optional. And topic configuration being one of the trickier elements of brig configuration. Topic can be specified as in received as topic from the remote poker, can be described as out, published to the remote broker, and topics can be specified as both published and subscribe to this topic. Topping re remapping as an MQT bridge involves translating or rewriting MQT topic names as messages and pass from one MQT network to the other. And this can be useful for various purposes, including protocol adaption, topic filtering, or data transformation. If you have two brokers, one and two, and broker one subscribes to a topic on broker two, and wants all data to be labeled broker two, it would add a line like the below to the configuration. So it's adding a prefix on all topics coming from broker two, so you would know uh, when you're filtering your data later, later where that data came from. Here's a basic configuration example, the connection name, uh, bridge one, the address and port you're connecting to, and you're saying you want to subscribe to all topics at QoS level one, and you want to publish all topics at QoS level one without any transformation of topic names. Here's an example of some basic remapping. Again, connection name, process lines, address uh, you're connecting to and port number. Um, you're leaving your topic out, QoS one and all out, and then topic uh, in, you're doing QoS one and you're adding a prefix of broker two uh, to any topic that comes in from the broker you've just connected to. Similar authentication approaches are available for bridges as regular clients username, passwords, and encryption. Um, and you can see an example of how that might be configured below, adding your CA file into your bridge options below. So that's a quick overview of bridging. Again, it's a topic uh, that we touched upon here, so you're aware of it. And if you are setting something like this up, work with your OT team, IT team, process team, and also work carefully with the user guides and uh, maintenance guides for the broker software that you're using. So this presentation was brought under the Remain project, uh, co-funded by the European Union under Erasmus+.